Please welcome today's master of ceremonies and politics reporter at CBS Bay Area, Melissa Kane. Hello, good morning. So happy to be here. I've been to so many of these, so I am quite used to being way back in the back. Uh, and I'm very happy to have uh, at least a better seat this year. So welcome, thanks for getting up so early. This is the 169th annual meeting of the San Francisco Chamber of Commerce. And I'm honored to be here today as your Master of Ceremonies. Now we're here this morning, of course, because we're all committed to supporting the community of San Francisco. We're invested in supporting businesses and for services for people who need them, and also for improving the quality of life for all residents. And we have a packed agenda today from the Chamber's top priorities. We've got exciting poll results. We've got an important economic update, and we're going to look at something called unreasonable leadership. And we're going to hear from the youngest woman to take a company public. Of course, we're also going to hear from our mayor. Now, I've been reading the biographies of the people I'm going to be introducing today, and I assure you, it is humbling. <laughs> I'm definitely thinking about my life choices. So we're going to have a great event today, and we're going to begin by bringing to the stage the chairman of the Chamber's Board, John Gingrich. Uh, thank you for joining the Chamber, uh, your business colleagues, uh, and civic leaders uh, for this uh, event this morning. Uh, very nice to have everyone here. So uh, before we begin the program, I have some acknowledgments and some thank yous. Uh, first of all, our CityBeat uh, sponsors. Uh, so our poll sponsor, Dignity Health, thank you very much. Our marquee sponsor, Wells Fargo, thank you. Our partner sponsors, AT&T, Kaiser Permanente, Sutter Health, CPMC, thank you all. Our media sponsors, hotel sponsor and AV sponsor. And finally, our leader and supporter sponsors. You are all investors in the success of our business, uh, community, and the city, so we thank you for your support. Uh, next, I want to recognize my fellow board members, uh, leaders in our business community, who represent diverse industries, and companies of all sizes. Uh, board members are wearing the red boutonnieres, so board members, please stand and be recognized for your commitment and service. Thank you. One of the Chamber's signature programs, Leadership San Francisco, is dedicated to developing the next generation of community leaders. This year marks its 35th year, which is pretty impressive. And LSF has turned out more than 1,700 graduates. So I'd like to invite all the leadership alumni to please stand. <laughs> Fantastic. I'd also like to recognize our elected officials who work so hard on behalf of the city, as well as members of the City Hall family and members of the military who are here with us today. If you could please stand. Thank you. As many of you know, the Chamber has been going through a thorough and thoughtful search for a new president and CEO. With a search committee led by Vice Chair and Man Managing Director at United, Melinda E. Franklin. Melinda, thank you for your time and commitment, for laying the groundwork for success for the Chamber, and for taking the Vice Chair role this year. We're very fortunate to have you. Uh, as we started the search process, it was critical to find a new president and CEO with a vision for how to effectively represent and drive more impact in the community on behalf of San Francisco businesses. We were looking for someone who has the ability to convene the various business organizations, as well as the skills to foster public and private collaboration. We hoped this unique individual was out there and are thrilled to share news with you on this topic later in the program. <laughs> so stay patient. It's worth sticking around for. Uh, I'll also share that the search drove us to dig deeper into the forward-looking agenda for the Chamber and how we best deliver on the commitment to lead initiatives 
that further our mission of attracting, developing, and retaining business in San Francisco. One way we're doing that is by focusing on the current and future workforce needs of our members. Two weeks ago, I joined a technology startup called Humu, departing Accenture after an amazing 27-year career. And my Accenture colleagues are here today as well. Uh, fortunately, uh, I left Accenture on good terms, and prior to my departure, uh, worked together to develop research in partnership with the Chamber, uh, which we are calling the Modern Workforce, San Francisco Jobs, Skills, and Opportunities in the Age of AI. The survey interviewed San Francisco business leaders to understand their readiness to develop, grow, and adapt as artificial intelligence, augmented intelligence, and automation become prevalent in the modern workplace. The Chamber will be releasing the full study in partnership with Accenture next month, but to give some context on why we feel this is so critical, one of the findings was that nearly 80% of those surveyed expect their businesses to experience extreme change as part of adapting and leveraging these new innovations over the coming years. A clear opportunity to work together through the change. To build on this, the Chamber will be convening a committee dedicated to the workforce of the future, what it means for local businesses. So be on the lookout for a signature event uh, exploring these topics in May. Continuing on the topic of workforce, we recognize the need to strengthen the pipeline for hiring our local youth and have been a proud partner through our education initiative, Unite SF, of Mayor Breed's Opportunities for All, which connects San Francisco youth with local internship opportunities. We are proud to announce that to date, more than 30 chamber board members are supporting Opportunities for All by pledging to hire or provide internships to 70 local youth this summer. So thank you, everyone, for that. The Chamber is founded on San Francisco values, and like the city, we embrace industry, innovation, and creative solutions. In the last year, we've worked closely with the emerging cannabis industry, adding them as members and advocating for their behalf for a more reasonable approach to permit regulations and zoning. We've been at the table with our partner organizations, the Hotel Council, SF Travel, and others for Clean Safe 365, a coalition committed to finding sustainable solutions to our street environment. Our board also took thoughtful steps to support safe injection sites, uh, we're the only Chamber of Commerce to do so, after touring sites in Vancouver and recognizing that we need more tools to address the straight state of our streets here in San Francisco. As these topical and often, thank you, controversial issues arise, the Chamber will be there with the city, and our partners to speak for business, loudly, thoughtfully, and with conviction. As a leader in the business community, I've had the opportunity to meet with and work with great visionaries. A true highlight has been working with Janice McKenzie, the chair's board chair, in 2018. Not only was Janice a great chair, she embodies the qualities that we value in the city, hardworking, smart, witty, thoughtful, inclusive, and fun. I'm proud to count Janice as a dear friend, and our relationship is something that will endure long after we both leave this board. So Janice, please join me so we can appropriately thank you for all you have done for the Chamber and the City. Thank you, John, and thank you to the entire chamber board, uh, to our membership, and to the terrific staff. Um, it's been quite a year, and I can tell you that I am so enthusiastic about the future of the chamber and the opportunity for the chamber to lead the conversation in terms of how we can all work together with our city partners, with our sister organizations, and with all members of the business community to make our city even greater. We've got a lot of hard work ahead of us, but we're up to it, and I thank you all for giving me the opportunity to be a part of it. Best wishes to John. <laughs> we, uh, so we, we, we would like to thank you here with a, a certificate of honor from the mayor and a, also a crystal gavel to showcase your leadership oh. and commitment to making just and swift decisions on behalf of the chamber. So thank you very oh, much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you.
Thank you, Janice. Uh, finally, uh, I am very proud to present our Civic, uh, Lifetime Civic Achievement Award. Uh, the Chamber gives this award to an extraordinary individual who has provided years of service to the city and the community. Chief Joanne Hayes-White is one of these trailblazing leaders. As the first woman to ever lead the department and the longest serving big city fire chief in the country, Chief Hayes-White has worked admirably to maintain the safety and the security of the people of San Francisco. She has developed one of the most diverse fire departments in the world, as well as advanced new technology, equipment, care, education, and accountability. It should come as no surprise that she is also a graduate of the Chamber's own Leadership SF program. A San Francisco native, she truly exemplifies the spirit of our city. Please join me in inviting Chief Joanne Hayes-White to the stage. Thank you, John. Good morning, everyone. Really appreciate this award from the Chamber, and thank you to the Chamber for all that you do. I'd also like to acknowledge those that served our meals today. Thank you very much. Can we give them a round of applause? As a native San Franciscan, it's been quite an honor and privilege to serve in the San Francisco Fire Department for 29 years, 15 as your fire chief. Like I said, truly an honor and privilege. Although I must say, retirement in May is looking pretty darn good right now. So with that, uh, thank you again. I would like to acknowledge my family members that are here today. If you could please stand, my eldest son, Riley. My sister, Patricia. And my nephew, Brendan. Thank you once again. <laughs> 